Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the top 8 commanders of all time. This data is coming from a website called EDH Rec. It's also interesting to use that website for financial information of what cards to buy, what cards to pick up, for which decks. The beauty of picking up EDH cards is the fact that it takes time for EDH players to build their decks. Therefore, if you see a lot of people building these uh, decks online, they may not have actually purchased a card yet. So if everyone's saying that this card belongs in this deck and the card hasn't gone up in price, that is a very clear indicator to buy. So the number one deck by far is has 5,000 decks, Atraxa. Now Atraxa is a, can be a very expensive build, but it is relatively cheap as long as you have the pre-constructed commander deck. It comes with most of the pieces. There's many themes that you can go with it. Being four colors is also very helpful. My favorite Atraxa deck is the Infect version. I like Infect. I always try to play Infect. It's, I think it's a unique way to win the game. And then ED8, so it's actually a little bit better because you, uh, the life totals don't matter because you have 40 life versus 20. It doesn't matter to the Infect, Infect player. So 1 versus 1 Atraxa is a very strong deck in the Infect build. See, is they also a ton of fun, but it will put a hard target on you because this is widely regarded as one of the top decks. Uh, next, Marin of Clan. So whenever a creature you control dies, you get an experience counter at the beginning of your end step. Choose target creature card in your graveyard if that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have. So this is very good. Um, getting the experience counter isn't tied to the creature, so killing her is not going to help. Uh, def it will stop you from being able to tick up, but you already have the experience counters. Uh, this was a very interesting commander. I didn't think it was going to be good, but it's a very creature base. As you can see that you have as many creatures as lands, and then you have a bunch of regular other stuff. So 35% of your deck is creatures, and it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, there are cheaper builds. Of course, there are more expensive builds because we are dealing with creatures. Uh, the Aristocrat build is a lot of fun. Recursion is a unique characteristic. This isn't as strong as Atraxa, but in my opinion, it is way more fun. Uh, it's more fun because you're not in blue. <laughs> so there's not the Force of Will, the Counter Spells, all that stuff. So... It's a fun deck, and I can understand why it's the number two. One versus one, I think it's much weaker than Atraxa. But that being said, there are plenty of combos you can pull off with the Recursion. And it has a unique effect, uh, being that even if you kill her, you still get the creatures back. Next, uh, we have Brea, and this is a very strong deck. Uh, it is not as creature heavy. Very artifact heavy, 21 artifacts in general on the deck. Another pre-con, we are going to see out of the top 8, there was only one card, one commander that was not a pre-con commander. And that one might surprise you, so if you want to take a guess, stop the video now. It's number 8, by the way. But yeah, that's the only one. Otherwise, you're just dealing with cards specifically made to be commanders and pre-packaged commander product. Brea is always very good. Great artifact deck. I really like uh, this Brea-like character. I've always really liked, what, what are they called? The white hair and the artifact. There was a bunch of them in charge of Alora. But uh, the, you can build it as expensive as you want, but the artifact versions, they can start at 270. They are the most popular version. Uh, there are budget versions on this one and tokens. I think overall this is a very flexible commander and it, you're in blue. So when I look at it, I look at it, there are decks in commander that are blue and they play the force of wills and the mana drains and all, all this stuff. And then there are decks in commander that are not blue. And that's how I look at commander. <laughs> so in my play group, we all play blue decks. Um, are we splash for blue? And we're trying to combo off. So my goal is to try to get my 
everyone else to prevent this person from comboing so I can combo off the next turn. So it's a, a lot of uh, mind games. Next we have Orlo, Ageless Aztec. Aztec. Uh, at the beginning of the upkeep, you gain two life. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card in each opponent. So this type of mechanic where you can get repeat draws whenever you gain life is very, very good. At the beginning of your upkeep, if it is in a command zone, you gain two life. So it's always very useful. It's a nice balance uh, of creatures, instant sorceries, artifacts, enchantments. And it's a very solid deck. And even if it's in your command zone, you keep getting the two life. So like something like a Johnny's Pride Maids just gets bigger and bigger. So it's not as slow as it normally looks. It actually is pretty fast because of its ability to gain you life from the command zone and consistently triggering these effects. Uh, you have uh, enchantment, life gain, stacks. I haven't seen the stacks version, but the life gain version is probably the most common one. Uh, it plays the Johnny's Primates. It plays all these cards that whenever, mostly in white, now that I think about it. And you want to gain life and do damage. And it's also in black. So there is a very, there's the blood combo. Sanguine blood and exquisite blood. That is always a very nice combo to pull off. And black gives you tutoring. So sometimes it's what colors you are in. I do like this deck. But we're going to get into the next deck. Which is something that is just a nightmare to play with. I don't like playing against this deck. And I actually don't have this version of the deck. I didn't buy the pre-con. I don't own the card. So puzzle box. Teferi's puzzle box. Or it was it Teferi's puzzle box? I think it was. And then this card is just insane. It just does so much more damage. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. So what you need to do is you need to not give card advantage, but you want like Teferi's puzzle box where everyone's just drawing, you know, putting their whole hand into the deck and then drawing that many. It does a lot of damage across multiple players very fast. Uh, it is a consistent damage output, and you, you have to address... So if you see this as, as the commander, you have to address this player. Like It's going to get out of control, and you know that he has counter spells, and you got to work around that. It's got creature removal. Relatively cheap deck. Uh, wheels, which means like you're, you are just wheeling your hand, or your opponent's hands, really. And they're going from hand to deck or graveyard and they're drawing that many cards. Really interesting mechanic, but I think it's a little broken. I personally do not like playing against this deck. Um, it is, in my opinion, something that like... So it's like a blue deck that hoses other blue decks. So it's like the worst type of blue deck. All right, now we have yes, this Maelstrom Wielder. Uh, this is a very cheap commander, and it has a ton of text. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast spells from your hand this turn. They gain Cascade. So Cascade is pretty fun. So if you cast a spell, exile the cards on top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. So pretty much, you go bonkers. Um, you just go... Insane with the spells that you're going to cast. Many of them allow you to take extra turns and then therefore can doing this again. So if your opponent has, if they, one of your opponents is, you're, you're able to hit them because they don't have creatures to block or they don't have the ability to offset the trample ability, then you're going to win the game. Uh, relatively cheap deck. Uh, most builds I see are 400 or under. Uh, the budget is extremely popular for this commander, and rightfully so, because it's one of the cheaper commanders out there right now. So this really tells you they did a good job. So if all these commanders, you know, out of all the cards and magic and all the legendary creatures, these are the most popular decks. Yeah, it's. I understand that, yes, it's probably popular because people can buy at Walmart and Target as opposed to maybe like a... Hannah Ship Navigator that they had to buy from a you know promotional product or something like that. Where did the Hannah come from? 
I'm trying to think. They reprinted her, and her reprint is not as expensive as the original Invasion by, like, a large margin. All right, Kalia Vast. This is a pricey card. If you have a Kalia, your goal is to foil out your, your Kalia because foil dragons, demons, and angels. What else do you need me to say, right? Uh, so Kalia is a creature-heavy deck. Remember I say blue and a non-blue. This is not blue, and when you tend to be not blue, you want to put you want to cheat stuff in play. You do get black for the nice tutoring. You get white for good removal, and red for red. In my opinion, is probably the weakest color in EDH, but it does have good spot removal. So, and I guess red in this deck actually is very good because the Relentless Assault cards. There's like a million of them, like Horde of Triumphs. No, Horde of Triumphs. That's a seven dollar new frexia card what is it horde of no notions no that's the commander something horde of something and it's from like not alliance code snap it's a very good card i forget what it was you discard two red cards i think and then you can play and then you take an extra combat step but anyway my point being this is a very good good card because that's what you want to do you want to keep repeating your combat step Keep plowing stuff down, and it is probably, in my opinion, the most beautiful deck because you do get a ton of gorgeous angels to uh, full our angels. Uh, I had one from mm, Rise of the Drazi. I think it's like a shadowless realm. It gives like indestructibility. That's a beautiful full art, and this is the only type of deck that can play it. Okay, lastly, we finally get to our number eight spot, which is the only non card made for ed8s i mean maybe you can think that this was made for ed8s it does have 40 lands so it is more land heavy it's very cheap it is a ton of fun um this is the type of deck that i would pull out not to win but to kind of troll and have fun so the ability to, so the second ability is more important whenever it or another elemental you control dies it deals free damage to target creature or player Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5-5 red and green elemental to creature token. So that token dies. Let's say you sacrifice it, you get to deal free damage. And then if you can landfall again, you get another token repeating this for an infinite amount of times. So it does have combo pieces, mostly in artifacts, that are very helpful. Ramp is also good. And lands, I think it comes as a very unique deck because it focuses on land so much and not too many decks do that uh, it's either creatures or counter spells in my opinion so this land focused deck just has a very unique flavor to it which make is why we play ed8s because everyone likes different stuff and sometimes you can try like a different disc and this is a different disc anyway bye guys